Uh, thank you for that introduction, and thank you, as always, uh, Fujitsu-san, for your support, um, and also uh, for uh, Fujitsu's uh, support as well. Um, I think you have uh, yeah. gone through the, the the antitrust policy, but just as a reminder, all Linux Foundation meetings, including the Linux Foundation centralized meetings, are always held under our antitrust policy. Um, so please do contact us if you have any questions. And of course, um, you know, I welcome the Japanese char Charter uh, Regional Chapter. Um, I'm very excited today to be doing a presentation uh, for you um, around the launch of LF Decentralized Trust. And I'll be talking to you today a little bit about why we chose to expand all the great work that we've been doing here in the Hyperledger community for the last eight years, um, join with other communities at the Linux Foundation, um, and very importantly, become a place for growth in decentralized technologies around the world. Um, I launched LF Decentralized Trust um, last week in uh, Vienna, in Austria, at Linux Foundation Open Source Summit. Feedback from our uh, community was very positive uh, across uh, many companies. Also, many Japanese companies were there in Vienna. Uh, and we thank you for your support and travel to, to these uh, um, Linux Foundation Open Source events. Um, I also then went to Singapore for Token 2049 and met with all the major banks, um, the Monetary Authority of Singapore, and the feedback has been very positive. And this week, I am uh, dialing in from uh, Barcelona. Um, I'm in Barcelona today, heading back to San Francisco. I was at the European Blockchain Convention. And again, people who have been in our community who have used Hyperledger technologies over the last eight years and continue to do so are very excited about LF Decentralized Trust. So all are welcome. Um, and thank you once again for having me join today. Um, I want to take a couple of minutes to talk about the changes and the things that we're seeing globally um, that really bring forward in decentralized technologies um, and why the time is great for Linux Foundation to really be able to expand and bring in new projects within these communities. So let me see if I can get rid of this. Um, so as global economies all around the world are turning into digital first infrastructures. And what that means is that decentralized technologies are defining essentially how we interact with each other, how we transact with each other and how we trust with each other. And that's both for individuals and for companies and government organizations. This of course is bringing in a new era where individuals uh, hold their own keys, right? So they own their keys to data, identity, and assets. And once again, individuals can also be companies or individual users as well. So trust becomes no longer just an institution's responsibility, but really a network's guarantee in these and we truly believe, and this was after many months of discussions, um, discussions with our, our members, uh, discussion with our governing board, um, and many thanks to Hitachi, who's our Japanese uh, governing board member, um, who has really participated in these discussions around where the future of these decentralized technologies are. And we truly believe, as does the Linux Foundation across all our projects, that open source, open development, and open governance is the key here. So I'd like to introduce to you, I know you've probably read some articles and you've probably seen some other videos. Um, I'd like to introduce to you LF Decentralized Trust, um, which is going to be the organization for the development and deployment of these decentralized systems and technologies. And I'll go through the definition of what we think about that. So welcome. You know, it's really a critical time in the global economy um, for uh, institutions to be able to trust and as well as consumers and users to be able to trust those institutions. And we really think that the collaborative development of these critical technologies, much like other major technologies uh, at across the Linux Foundation, and certainly the ones that Hyperledger has been growing um, with Hyperledger Fabric and Bezu and Cacti um, over the years, is that it's really needed for critical um, technologies to move forward to be able to collaborate globally. 
When we talk about decentralized technologies, we want to specifically put a broad sco scope on it because there are more technologies that we believe are either in academics, institutions right now and others that can also be part of decentralized tech. Uh, decentralized tech. And so when we talk about decentralized technologies and if you look at our project portfolio, um, you'll see that there are obviously blockchains and distributed ledgers, smart contracts, uh, decentralized file storage and decentralized identity systems, uh, zero knowledge proofs, uh, multi-party computation, and federated systems. And these are just some examples of the type of communities and projects that LF Decentralized Trust will host. The key, just might like any important technology from an open source perspective, you know, these technologies are really changing the market landscape and disrupting a lot of the old business models, uh, both in finance in government services with digital public infrastructure and many of the projects that are going on. I know certainly Japan leads the way in those. And, you know, being part of this community and all of you there in the room today are part of the LF Decentralized Trust community. So I welcome you and I thank you for you know, volunteering and for being part of our community um, is really an investment in what we believe is a foundational technology infrastructure. What we are seeing today across the central banks, for example, what we're seeing today across major institutions in finance and healthcare and trade and supply chain is really rebuilding infrastructure for a modern digital economy um, and collaborating with all of you and the companies and the ecosystem partners that you have is going to be essential in supporting the work that we do um, and very much in supporting the work that you can bring forward um, to help transform these industries and impact these communities. Now, I want to be very clear. A lot of this work has already been happening at Hyperledger Foundation for the last eight years. And that is all thanks to or individuals and organizations like the ones that are in the room today. So I want to thank everyone. Um, and, you know, be very um, excited about continuing this investment and this leadership in, in building uh, this infrastructure worldwide. So when we think about the impact of decentralized technologies, and you'll see more and more reports out there talking about this, um, and we'll certainly share it with our, with our community, is, um, you know, they're, like as I mentioned before, really reshaping the way markets and traditional businesses are done. Um, it is modernizing core infrastructure. Uh, I said this before, we see it in government and healthcare and finance and trade. Um, a lot of these industries um, and global implementations and global um, communi communities um, are really modernizing a lot of the technology. And we believe that the technologies that um, are across the Linux Foundation and certainly at LF Decentralized Trust continue to be important. Um, one thing is essential to emerging tokenized asset classes and networks. There was a recent report for IBCG Boston Consulting uh, Group uh, where asset tokenization alone uh, was predicted to be have a market cap of over $16 trillion by 2020. Uh, 2020 seems like a long time away, but it actually is not, right? So we're, we're really close to um, this market really exploding um, and there being just a lot of opportunities, just in asset tokenization as well. And so we see a growing landscape of these uh, of these technologies, um, and certainly we want to build uh, upon the projects, the communities, uh, the maintainers, and the members across the Linux Foundation, um, and uh, what we've built uh, once again over the last eight years. So I'm going to quickly just take you through what today's projects look like and how they came into the foundation. Um, many of you were here in 2015 when we launched the Hyperledger project. Um, so in 2015, we launched the Hyperledger project with uh, Hyperledger Fabric, uh, which was the first project that came in. Um, and it's followed by other projects as well. And Hyperledger Eroja is uh, still a very active project as well. Um, they're just doing a, another implementation in the central bank digital currency place. Um, and Fabric continues to be one of the most used permission distributed ledgers. Um, we just announced, or the maintainers just announced V3, 
uh, which builds uh, on performance enhan enhancements introduced into version 2.5, um, which is the current uh, LTS release. Um, it also came with uh, BFT, so Byzantine Fault Tolerance, uh, which is uh, increases uh, the reliability of Hyperledger fabrics. And I know a lot of people worldwide in the community have been waiting for fabric to support BFT. And once again, thank you all uh, who provided feedback on the beta version of uh, version three. Fabric, as I mentioned, continues to be well developed. I'm excited to say, for example, Volvo, the new electronic X90 Volvo car that just started coming on off the manufacturing um, uh, factories for cars um, is the first car with a digital passport. That digital passport um, uh, traces where the ba battery minerals came from, from a traceability perspective, as a requirement to the European Union's re uh, digital battery passport um, regulation. So um, effective, I believe it's 2027, all new cars need to have a digital passport, which will have essentially the traceability, the exact providence of the minerals, and also very importantly, the circularity. When these minerals are done with the car, how can they be recycled as well? These minerals are very precious and we don't have many. Um, so it's a great, great opportunity. All that is powered by Hyperledger Fabric, a company called Circular, uh, essentially is working with 150 different car manufacturers and suppliers um, in that space. And there's hundreds of other fabric um, use cases that are fantastic. So we see a continued growth for the fabric ecosystem as well. Um, as uh, 2017, we welcomed, uh, obviously, projects like Cello and identity pro projects with Indy, Calipur coming in in 2018, um, Aries, which was brought out of Indy uh, in 2019, um, and very importantly, in 2019 was Bezu. So Bezu, and you notice that Bezu has actually dropped the name Hyperledger, and now uh, as the new project within LF Decentralized Trust is just called Bezu. But Bezu continues to be very, very well adopted both as a public and a private permission network um, in different use cases uh, to, to the AVM. Um, and today, 15% um, of the Ethereum mainnet, so 15% of the Ethereum mainnet today runs Bezu as an execution client. So there's a lot of value that Bezu is bringing to that public blockchain, to the Ethereum public blockchain. And, but we see Bezu all over the place. Um, in Singapore, for example, many of the tokenization projects, many of the CBDC projects around the world. So we're very excited about the future for Bezu uh, in our community as well. We have a very active labs um, and things like projects like Cacti that came out of the labs. We have over 50 labs today. Um, Cacti continues to mature. And I want to highlight that as part of LF Decentralized Trust, we also uh, ha now have Trust Over IP, which came in in 2020. Um, and Trust Over IP is really uh, focused on common standards and a complete architecture for internet digital trust. Um, for those of you who have not oh, participated yeah. in Trust Over IP, I would highly uh, recommend um, that you do take a look at the work that's done there. Um, I would love to see more collaboration and contributions from the Japanese community, especially once again, as uh, digital public infrastructure and di digital identity continues to be very important in the chat in the region there as well. Uh, 2021, we had some some tooling, uh, new projects with Firefly and Bevel in 2022 with Solang and Anon Creds. And even this year, we brought in Web3J uh, and Identus uh, as a new project from the Cardano ecosystem. So our ecosystem continues to grow. And uh, last week on September 16th, in addition to announcing LF Decentralized Trust, we announced two new projects that the Technical Advisory Committee had approved. Uh, one is called Lockness, which is um, a key management and digital signature protocol. Um, and this is a very exciting project from a decentralized technologies perspective, and really the first of many, we believe, of these cryptographic um, projects uh, to come into LF Decentralized Trust. Um, a full uh, blog post is available um, on our blog. And you can read not only about the project, about why the company behind the project contributed it to LF Decentralized Trust, um, but also how to get involved, how to become a community member from the start. We'll be having meetups and other types of opportunities for everyone to get involved 
worldwide. Um, I also think they have the cutest little logo. This is Loch Ness for Loch Ness Mo Monster. If uh, any of you, um, you know, know the myth uh, of the Loch Ness Mo Monster. So I think they really did a great job at taking that uh, and making it into a logo. So congratulations to the Loch Ness maintainers as well. Um, and because we continue to see a spectrum of blockchains and enterprises using not just permission blockchains, but also public blockchains, um, we continue to see and want to bring in and want to find uh, the projects that really yeah. make sense for the enterprise and are, you know, very aligned with enterprise needs, uh, which now more and more, you know, a lot of the public blockchains as well. So one of the things we also announced as part of the announcement of LF Decentralized Trust is a new project called Hiro uh, and Hiro for hieroglyphics, like the Egyptian. Um, so whenever you think, how do I say it? Think hieroglyphics, and it's Hiro. Um, and this is actually an Egyptian H uh, symbol for an e Egyptian H. Um, and Hiro is um, essentially the code, the entire code base for the Hedera public blockchain. Um, so Hedera has contributed their entire code base for the Hedera public uh, network to LF Decentralized Trust. And once again, you can read um, a complete uh, blog post around why Hedera really thinking, forward thinking around decentralization of their code, um, really believe that the Linux Foundation and LF Decentralized Trust was a home for them. And once again, in that blog post, you'll find ways to get involved in the community. We'll have meetups, we'll have workshops and really get everybody involved in that community as well. So we really believe that, you know, a lot of the things that we've done um, is the future of decentralized technologies. And we are a global community. We're a community of tech leaders and service providers um, and really forward looking enterprises. Many of you there in the room work for companies that are forward looking. So we thank you. Um, as we thought, as we look through, you know, and talk to our members about, you know, LF decentralized trust, um, we did an intent to launch in June and we got some great quotes. Obviously, um, Hitachi support has been uh, fantastic. Fantastic, and we thank everyone from Hitachi for supporting us. Uh, but companies like Visa um, and companies um, like Polygon and Tata Consulting Services, who have just joined LF Decentralized Trust, who really believe in collaboration in this ecosystem, is going to uh, take us faster and further along. So uh, many of these quotes are also on the website if you want to see other supporting quote company, as, um, and you can take a look and see what they say. The other thing I'm very excited to say is, is we continue to grow our central bank founding members. Um, and for example, last week we announced the Central Bank of Brazil, who has a very large central bank digital currency project called DREX um, that is powered by Bezu. Um, it, we welcome them as an associate member and that list will continue. We'll have uh, an exciting announcement coming up in October of another uh, Asia Pacific uh, regional uh, um, uh, authority, monetary authority joining. So it's very exciting to see um, these members are engaged. Um, they're actually coming to our member event in San Francisco and they wanna learn from our community. They wanna learn from each other um, and they wanna really lead in open source and open development. Um, and that's really important. This is a lot of work that we've been doing um, in educating um, in really getting the central banks and the BIS and the, the authorities uh, around the world really understanding why open source is critical as this new financial infrastructure is being built out. Our membership, if you, anybody who was a Hyperledger member becomes a member of LF Decentralized Trust, any member who was trust over IP member becomes a member of LF Decentralized Trust. And these are all our founding members. We also announced 14 different members um, last week. So we welcome all the new companies uh, like Hashgraph, um, Polygon, I mentioned before, uh, and a couple others that you'll see uh, in the press release. You can read them all. Um, and once again, we are you know, very privileged to have leadership from companies like Accenture and DTCC and our Japanese premier member, Hitachi. Um, and we also just welcomed Hedera as a premier member as they continue to help support the growth of the Hyro project in our ecosystem. I mentioned the associate members. We have some great lists of associates that are really driving um, a lot of work that they do, uh, that we do, uh, including the Digital Currency Forum. And maybe there's some of you in the audience today. So hello. Um, the Digital Currency Forum has very exciting news. I know they put out some news recently about some of their releases. So we're very happy to support the Digital Currency Forum and the work that they're doing there in Japan.
But we are community driven, just much like the Hyperledger community and what we built out for the last eight years. It really is about you all and the people around the world that show up every single day uh, to either contribute uh, to the code, um, to you know help with use cases, to help one another really understand and use um, and really make the code and the projects that we have uh, best in, in the world uh, for people to use. So I'm very grateful for that. Um, so LF Decentralized Trust will incorporate all the working groups from Trust Over IP and from the Hyperledger Foundation. Um, we, of course, are very delighted with the regional chapters that we're able to bring along and really continue to grow the regional chapters, like in India, uh, where there's over 15,000 um, uh, participants, and in Brazil, as well as, of course, Japan. Um, and today, I actually, uh, this morning, checked, uh, we are close to uh, over 1,800, so uh, over 1,826 1, participants, um, and that is you in the room all there, and as well as everybody else um, in Japan who is supporting um, the community that we are building, mm -hmm. and we're very excited about that. So um, I want to thank specifically all the leaders um, a, that are supporting uh, the Japanese regional chapter. I know there's many of you, um, including staff as well at, at LF Japan. Um, and I want to thank everybody for that as we continue to grow. And I'm sure next year when we do a presentation like this, this number, I guarantee you will be higher. We continue to be very diverse in what we do. Obviously, we do see a lot of growth and interest in the financial sector, uh, but we see use cases across all sectors, right? Um, so in climate action, especially around a lot of climate accounting um, and climate action uh, use cases um, in the public sector from a digital identity and a credentialing perspective, and certainly in supply chain and trade finance. So we continue to see these and support these use cases across all projects and really find ways for the projects to also collaborate with one another on how they service many use cases worldwide um, across the industries. So we have a growing landscape of, of projects. Um, we have now categorized them mostly uh, in ledger technologies, um, in interoperability, and we'll see more projects in the interoperability as it becomes more and more important and these networks around the world continue to grow, go into production and be able to communicate with one another. Um, integration and implementation of, of these networks and these projects. Uh, decentralized identity, once again, uh, this uh, stack continue, will continue to grow, and now we have uh, Trust Over IP, which is a joint development fund, um, which is a, se a separate than a code project, and we do support uh, standards and specifications. Um, Hyperledger non-creds is a community specification project, and Trust Over IP is a joint development fund project. Um, and if you are interested, you can go on the wiki and find in more information about what that means. Um, and last, cryptographic tools and protocols, as I mentioned. Mentioned, uh, Loch Ness is you know the first of I believe many projects that are just going to be critical to um, implementations actually going into secure production implement uh, implementations as well. And I think there's many more, and I encourage everybody there in Japan as you think about uh, code that you use, code that you're developing, code that you believe are critical to decentralized technologies, um, to please be in touch with us, reach out to us. We're happy to have a conversation. Um, Hart Montgomery, our CTO, would be happy to have a call with you uh, to not only take a look at the code that you have uh, and maybe might be interested in contributing to LF Decentralized Trust, um, but also talk about what can, what can the community build together? If you all remember, Hyperledger Cacti uh, was brought in from by the community in the labs. So what are the things, what's next that as a community we can start? What are the things in labs that we should really be pushing forward? And what are the new code projects um, and existing code projects around the world that we could bring? So I thank you in advance uh, for helping us in those conversations. So encourage everyone, if you are, everybody here is of course a community member, um, but organizations, if your companies are not members of uh, LF Decentralized Trust, so you have not been a member of Hyperledger nor Trust Over IP, um, we welcome you to join us uh, as 
members and really, you know, get a seat at the table for shaping uh, the future of these technologies uh, around the world. And we're very excited uh, once again to welcome new members. We'll have a new announcement for new members coming in October. Um, and if you're interested in being in part of that new announcement, we'll put out a press release announcing uh, a major monetary authority, um, including a major uh, credit card company um, and other organizations. Uh, we would love to have you there as well. Um, as part of what we do for our members, we will be in San Francisco um, in October, at the end of October, and I know some of you will be there, so I can't wait to see you. Um, and there, that is our annual member event um, and is a great opportunity for networking and really, you know, talking about the strategy of the projects and where LFDT uh, is going in the future. Um, and once again, that's going to be in October. It is a member-only event. Um, if you're interested, uh, please do reach out and we're happy to talk to to you about it. You can view the agenda. And we'll make these slides, of course, available. Um, it is being held at the San Francisco Mint, which is where uh, the Mint is where old money used to be printed back in the 1800s when the uh, miners used to bring gold up from the California mountains and the Sierras. They would bring it to San Francisco. They would take it to the San Francisco Mint. They will weigh out their gold and they would get bills back in their hand and go off to go get more gold. Uh, the San Francisco Mint, you know, basically where old money meets new money. And I'm very excited about the kind of sessions um, and collaboration that we'll bring there as well. So once again, if you're coming already, can't wait to see you. Uh, I know some of you are. And if you're interested in coming, please do uh, reach out and we can um, discuss further. So once again, welcome to LF Decentralized Trust, um, which is all a combination of all the Hyperledger projects. Um, it is a combination of trust over IP, an existing project at the Linux Foundation, and the newest projects that we welcomed, Hyro and Loch Ness, but certainly there is going to be a lot of new projects coming in. So do keep an eye on the projects and communities that really want to join um, what we're building here, what we've been building for the last eight years and what we are building for the future. And I want, once again, thank the uh, LF Decentralized Trust Japan chapter. Um, and uh, you could abbreviate it, LF Decentralized Trust to LFTT when you're talking. Uh, we're trying to make sure that people understand the full name of the foundation as LF Decentralized Trust, but you'll see me once in a while slip into LFDT. So welcome to LFDT um, and thank you for your time. And I will go ahead and uh, unshare the, yeah, I'll unshare. There you go. Thank you, Daniel. Thanks for the great presentation in very short Thank time. You. Sorry. Uh, the, <laughs> uh, the I'd like to take the, uh, the several questions from the floor. Uh, the please raise your hand and the other uh, uh, the stuff go to you. Do you have any questions or comments? Thank you very much, Daniela. Uh, I'm Kenji, and I uh, would like to ask some questions. And uh, thank you very much for explaining your lockness and their uh, hero. Mm -hmm. uh, regarding the project, do you have any update or announcement about the Hyperledger Zeto? Which the one? Which one? Zeto. The Zeto. Yes. Zeto. Yeah. So it, it is a lab. It is not a project. It is currently a lab. Um, it is um, a privacy-focused uh, lab. There are some other projects that are coming, um, I would say, in the la next two weeks that will be coming in as a lab to address some of the privacy requirements or the privacy needs uh, specific to Bezu. Um, is, and, um, you know, please do keep an eye on it. So uh, Zeto is a lab. It was a contribution by one of our member companies called Kaleido. Um, the lab repo is available. You should be able to take a look at it. Um, but there will be more uh, more projects. Uh, we have new companies that joined as well as part of the last announcement that um, are, are working on uh, additional privacy-specific uh, code projects. Understood. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I would think those projects will probably go to the TAC, the technical. Uh, one thing I didn't mention is the, the current technical oversight committee of Hyperledger Foundation. So the technical oversight committee for Hyperledger Foundation becomes the technical advisory committee 
for LF Decentralized Trust. So they are now part of, they're the voting representatives of the Technical Advisory Committee for LF Decentralized Trust. The entirety of the project lifecycle and the project services that we had at Hyperledger continue and are just expanded as part of LF Decentralized Trust. Elections for the Technical Advisory Committee will start next month in October. Uh, I encourage everyone in Japan who's interested, maintainers who are interested, um, to please, you know, reach out to David Boswell or Hart Montgomery if you're interested in discussing. And um, we'd love to see uh, more nominations uh, from the Japanese community. Thank you for comments. So the, as the, uh, the Daniela mentioned, the, uh, the, the, because of the, the total organization was reorganized. So the, we will be a uh, vote for the, uh, the technical committee, uh, steering committee uh, and uh, uh, maintenance. Uh, is that correct? Daniel? Um, yes, uh, yes. So before the, before the member summit, right? The date of the... Uh, yes, I, uh, yes the, the nomination period is early October for the technical okay. advisory committee. Um, and then elections happen um, at the end of October. So we will have our new TAC after member summit. And just keep in mind, member summit is just for members, right? The technical advisory committee is an open community thing. You do not need to be a member to be part of the technical advisory committee. So, um, but it happens to be, we're doing, you know, uh, you know, nominations in the beginning of October, the member event at the end of October, and then elections, uh, during that time period as well. Did that make sense? Yeah. Uh, the, I just misunderstood. Thank you very much for the clarifications. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, also the, uh, the Daniela mentioned about the, uh, the date of the, uh, the member summit will be uh, October 22nd and 3rd, right? And uh, mm -hmm. we will mm -hmm. have the, uh, the pre-event for the, uh, the member summit meeting. Is that correct? Uh, yes, I, I there's a meet. Yeah. So let me just actually share. Yeah. Where did I lose my it, share? It is a kind um, of very uh, the the historical place. So the it mm -hmm. is also now the prepare as a uh, meeting place. So the we will mm -hmm. be meeting to the this kind of very uh, traditional place regarding to the uh, the fiat currency uh, used to be. Mm -hmm. So the, mm -hmm. uh, the so the this is a good opportunity to uh, join to the this meeting and. Hearing to the uh, the all the maintainers and uh, mm -hmm. the active uh, contributors uh, getting together, so the I will mm -hmm. uh, the encourage to you to the to register the, if you are already member and the generic member uh, has a, a member one, uh, one member and the premium member had a three member uh, as a other uh, was free tickets. Uh, the, so the other uh, that is information. So do yeah. you have any other questions from the floor? Um, the, and just the, the maintainer days, you're right, is gonna be the 21st and 22nd, Monday and Tuesday. Um, that is gonna be held at the Salesforce Tower. Um, Accenture um, is graciously hosting our maintainers for the two days. Um, and you can see the agenda is already, so um, we'll, we can send out these links, uh, but you can see the agenda uh, already uh, for maintainer days. Um, as well as, uh, so there's an event page on the wiki. And if you have things that you want to uh, share, you can uh, start adding them to the wiki as well on the maintainers. This still goes to the Hyperledger uh, wiki because it's still active. Um, so you can see the kind of uh, activities. So once again, the maintainer day, you do not need to be a member. You can come to the maintainer day if you're a maintainer or if you apply to come. Um, and you can see it's really going to be a, a real, a great interactive uh, discussion uh, specific for the maintainers across all projects and really an opportunity for the projects to talk to each other about the projects that they're doing um, and, um, you know, collaborate, you know, make sure that they're able to collaborate on things as we move forward as well. The agenda for the member summit, which is more the business technical chats, is now up as well. Um, you can get it off our website in the events listing, um, and you can see uh, the talks. We'll have Jim Zemlin do a keynote as well, um, and we have some great companies um, who are speaking um, and presenting uh, throughout the two days. 
Thank you, Daniel. So I think that the, uh, the, uh, the main people are the, are the very satisfied for their, your presentation. So the, uh, I direct the floor members to make our, uh, the, the thanks for the, uh, the, to the Daniel. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll, we'll share the entire deck and links as well um, out to everybody. So thank you so much. Thank you, Daniela. Thank you.